Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. In this video, we're going to learn about a new subtopic in thermochemistry called Hess's Law. According to Hess's Law, amount of energy required for reactant A to form product C is the same as energy required when reactant A react with reactant B to form product C. There are three methods to calculate enthalpy of reactions, which are algebraic method, energy cycle method, and formula. All three methods will give you exactly the same answer, but an exception is applied to the third method, which is the formula, as it can only be used if standard enthalpy of formations are given. Now, let's use this one example to calculate using all methods one at a time. Nitric acid HNO3, whose worldwide annual production is about 8 billion kg, is used to make many products including fertilizers, dyes, and explosives. The first step in industrial production process is the oxidation of ammonia. So the questions already gives you the equations when ammonia being oxidized, where 4 NH3 gas react with 5 oxygen gas to form 4 NO gas and 6 H2O gas. Then they ask you to calculate the enthalpy of reactions. So this enthalpy of reactions belongs to the oxidation of ammonia given in blue. In order for you to find delta H reactions, information regarding each molecule has been given to aid you in finding delta H reactions. So we have information regarding standard enthalpy formations for NH3, NO, and also H2O. Note that all this delta has the unit of kilojoule per mole. Indicating these values belongs to only one mole of NH3, one mole of NO, and also one mole of H2O. For the first two methods, which are algebraic and energy cycle order, you are going to do the same first two steps but different representations of final working. First, list all the thermochemical equations involved, both targeted and given. What's the difference between these two? Targeted equations is always the main equation that define the reactions. As these questions already gives you the thermochemical equations, then you can simply use it. But sometimes, questions can also ask for any other reactions that make up the main reactions. It all depends on the question structure. How are you going to list every thermochemical equation from those values of standard enthalpy formations? by using your prior knowledge on the definitions of enthalpy learned in subtopic 2.1. You need to construct the thermochemical equations from scratch. Delta H0 for NH3 is negative 45.9 kJ per mole, means one mole of NH3 is formed from its element in their most stable states, where in this case, we have nitrogen as N2 and hydrogen as H2 to keep only one mole of NH3 to be formed. Same goes to NO. N is the most stable as N2, while O is the most stable as O2. To get one mole of NO, then only half of each N2 and O2 will react. Lastly is water. Water is made up from H2 and O2. Therefore, one mole of H2 and half mole of O2 will react to form one mole of H2O. Since the value given is for one mole of molecules, then we have to modify it a bit to suit our targeted equations. Modify here means if the molecules is initially on the right, but in targeted equations it should be on the left, then we need to reverse the reactions. If initially our number of mole is 5, but the number of mole on targeted equations is 1, then we need to divide it by 5. These changes will also have an effect on both sign and magnitude of delta H value. We will focus on molecules that appear once first, then only molecules that appear several times because if they appear several times, there are possibility for them to be added if they are located on the same side or cancel out if on different side. We'll start with NH3. On targeted equation, NH3 is located on the left-hand side with coefficients 4, while in given equations, it is located on the right-hand side and has coefficients of 1. Therefore, 
we will modify these equations by reversing and times it with 4. Hence, our equations will be like this and delta H is going to be positive 183.6 kilojoule. This delta H is no longer per mole because these equations already times with 4 for the whole equations. Next is O2. If we check our given equations, we can see O2 is present twice. So we'll leave it for now and proceed to NO. On targeted equations, we have 4NO on the right hand side. Side where NO is located is the same as in targeted equations apart from its coefficients. So we just need to times the whole equations with 4 giving these whole equations and delta H of positive 361.2 kilojoule. Then, we have water. Same case as NO, where we just need to multiply the whole reaction with 6 to get 6H2O. Delta H has now become negative 1450.8 kilojoule. Then, what about O2? As for O2, we're going to keep it until the final step since they have the possibility to be added or cancelled out. By listing all the modified equations, we're going to check whether they are tailing with the targeted equations or not. So, we have 4NH3 on the left, we have 4NO on the right and also 6H2O on the right. So, we are left now with N2, H2 and O2. Our targeted equations do not have both N2 and H2. And since we have N2 and H2 on both sides with the same coefficients, then we can cancel them out. We are left with O2 in our targeted equations. And we can see 2O2 and 3O2 is both on the left. So we can add them together to finally get 5O2. That is for algebraic method. The final working is by doing some mathematical works by rearranging the equations back and forth. Now, we are going to add everything together to get the delta H4. 183.6 plus 361.2 minus 1450.8 kilojoule will give you delta H4 of negative 906.0 kilojoule. As for energy cycle method, you also need to do the first two steps we've done earlier. This is the final working of this method. We'll start with our targeted equations. Don't forget to write enthalpy of reactions on top of the arrow. By referring to our first modified equations, 4 and H3 will give out 2 and 2 and 6 H2 with delta H of positive 183.6 kJ. Followed by second modified equations where 2N2 react with 2O2 to give 4NO with delta H of positive 361.2 kJ. Next, 6H2 react with 3O2 to give 6H2O with delta H of negative 1450.8 kJ. Don't forget to write the unit when writing the delta H. How do we calculate the delta H4 from this energy cycle? We're going to use clockwise equal to anti-clockwise manner. We have H4 in clockwise manner. The clockwise means they turn clockwise. While for delta H1, delta H2 and delta H3, they are all in anti-clockwise manners. So if we combine these two, we're going to get H4 is equal to H1 plus H2 plus H3. Lastly, we're going to get exactly the same value of delta H4 as in algebraic method. The third method is by using formula. The formula of delta H reactions equal to summations of delta H products minus summation delta H reactants can only be used if standard enthalpy of formations are given in the questions. The question will sometimes use only symbol to represent this value. Make sure that the value got superscript of 0 represents standard conditions, while lower script of F represents the formation's reactions. For this type of method, we don't need to modify all those equations. 
we can simply take the numbers and substitute into the formula. But please make sure to have your equations balanced before substituting the value. Let's check if we've already got all the values needed. So we have value for NH3, we have value for H2O, and also we have value for NO. Wait, we don't have value for oxygen yet. Note that oxygen is now in its most stable states of O2. Formations of elements at their most stable state usually have delta H of 0. By substituting the delta H of products minus reactants, so we can see we have product of 4NO and 6H2O and reactants of 4NH3 and 5O2. Then we're going to sum up everything. Then we will have the same delta H reaction as in previous methods, which is negative 906.0 kilojoule. Enthalpy of solutions, enthalpy of hydrations, and lattice energy can be determined by using this one process called dissolutions process. Dissolutions process is a process of dissolving solid salt in water. Let's say we have a solid salt to start with. Once we dissolve it in water, will they immediately disappear from our side? As proposed by Hasse's law, where the change in the enthalpy is the same, whether the reaction takes place in one step or in a series of steps, this process will show if the root works. For one-step reactions, where solid ionic compounds dissolve in water to form infinite dilute solutions, the change in energy is known as enthalpy of solutions. As we can see from the example, we initially have solid states, and then once it undergoes these reactions, they will form aqua-state solutions. For a series of steps root, the crystal lattice, as in the solid, will first break into gases ion. The energy change in this step is known as lattice energy. Lattice energy cater for the conversions of solid atom to gases ion and vice versa. Next, gases ions will then be surrounded by water molecules to finally form aqueous ion. Enthalpy involved in this state is hydration. To help you see this process better, we're going to illustrate it using energy cycle diagram. We will start with one step reactions where there is enthalpy of solutions MgCl2 solid is dissolved in water to give out Mg2 plus and 2Cl minus aqueous. For a series of steps reactions, MgCl2 will first break into gases ion Mg2 plus and 2Cl minus. In order to break the lattice, it will require energy, hence, that this energy takes place here must be in positive value. The directions of the arrow must also tally with the sign, therefore, it pointed upwards. Followed by second step, where these gases ions are surrounded by water molecules. This will cause electrostatic forces to be formed. Formations of forces require energy to be released, therefore, the enthalpy of hydrations will have negative value. Same goes to its arrow, which pointing downwards. Note that enthalpy of hydrations sometimes be given as one value for both species and sometimes separately. Those values given only cater for one mole of ions hydrated. So for this example, we need to times the enthalpy of hydrations for Cl with 2 because it got coefficients of 2. Lastly, is to compare both values in clockwise and anti-clockwise manner. They should both have the same value as enthalpy of solutions is equal to lattice energy plus enthalpy hydration for Mg and also enthalpy hydrations for Cl. That's all for subtopic 2.3 Hasse's Law. Thank you for listening. You may now proceed to do your non-face-to-face -face and face-to-face -face questions for tutorial week 4, hour 1 and hour 2. Thank you.